I get asked fairly regularly what wetsuits I use for swimming in the sea in the UK. And in this video, I'm going to talk to you about the different types of wetsuits that allows me to go swimming in the sea 12 months a year. time you're planning on going in the water will all depend on whether you need boots, a hood or even gloves. It's currently January in Cornwall. The water temperature today is about between 10 and 11 degrees. I'm currently wearing a 5-3 wetsuit which represents the thickness. I've also got 3 mil gloves, a 3 mil hood and 1 mil socks on as well. You may have clicked on this video because you were thinking, well, I want to know what wetsuits to wear in the summer months in Cornwall. Well, we're going to get into that. So the key to warming up after being in the sea is getting something hot inside of you. I haven't got any food in the van. Let me sort that out. So I'm going to call this section Sean's guide to Sean's guide to wetsuits. So which wetsuit is best for you? The wetsuit I was using today, bear in mind this is really wet now, is the Sea Skin 5-3. The 5-3 represents the millimeters of thickness of the neoprene on the wetsuit. The 5 mil represents the neoprene thickness on the chest. So you've pretty much got your chest and then sometimes your upper legs as well will be the same thickness as what the chest is and the free mill represents the arms and the legs of the wetsuit. I tend to use this wetsuit all year round for snorkeling, simply because I'm normally completely submerged in the water all year round, and I find that the thickness of that one enables me to stay in the water for longer without getting any sort of chill. Now this wetsuit is a back zip, which means that every now and then you might get a bit of a flush down, down the back of the neck. But for me personally, I prefer back zips simply because they're a lot easier to get in and out of. If you were looking for a wetsuit to get in the summer, you wouldn't necessarily need a 5-3. You could probably get away with a 3-2, which is like this one. Again, this one is a back zip. The 3 mil aspect of it is for the chest, so that's the thickness of that. And the 2 mil is the thickness of the arms. A lot stretchier, a lot easier to get in and out of. If you own a wetsuit and you're unsure of the thickness of it, it's normally written on the arms. I tend to use this wetsuit for when I'm paddle boarding or if I'm surfing or anything like that because it doesn't need to be that thick if I'm using it in the summer, simply because I'm spending most of my time out of the water. Whereas when I'm snorkeling, I like to have that little bit of a thicker suit just so that I can get away with being in the water for longer. Another option that you have is a chest zip. So essentially what that is, rather than you having a zip at the back, you've got one at the front. Now these are fine for surfing and anything really because you don't get any leakage in the back of the suit or anything. But this is a fairly thick one that I've got, which I used to use for snorkeling. And... The only way out of it is you have to kind of pull it down from your neck over your, your elbow. And it's a right nightmare to get in and out of, especially if you've been paddling a lot, if you've been swimming, if you're exhausted, it's not the easiest wetsuit to get out of. I'm gonna move on to wetsuit accessories now, which is hoods, boots, and gloves. I will come back to giving you a bit more information on what wetsuit I think you should get if you are planning on just using it in the summer months. So let's start on footwear. These were the socks that I was wearing in the water today. They are one mil. The reason why I always go for a fairly thin wetsuit sock is because I need to get my fins over the socks. So the thinner the better. If I did want to go for a thicker sock like this one here, this these are four mil thick. I would essentially use fins that had a, a strap at the back that I could just strap them on. So that's what I would wear if I was snorkeling. Now there are different variations of boot, depending on what you're gonna be using it for. If you're planning on doing any surfing in winter and you feel like you need to have warm feet, I would always recommend a split toe boot. 
Essentially what that does is if you're popping up and down on a surfboard, if you don't have a split toe, your foot can actually roll inside the boot or the boot can get twisted around. If it's just for rock pools or anything like that, you can just get a normal boot which doesn't have a split toe like this one. Uh, these are great, just they tend to be easier to get in and out of than the split toes to be honest. Very, very handy because they've got the tread on the bottom. Now we'll move on to hoods. You can pretty much get any variation of hood. These tend to be for diving or snorkeling. Very good fit. It will keep your head very warm if you keep your head under the water. The one I tend to wear is this one, which has a little peak on it. These hoods are fantastic for surfing because the whole point of the hood is to sort of just keep the glare of the sun out of your eyes. I wear it when I go snorkeling. I don't really know why. I just kind of like the way it fits me, really. And I like the fact that it's got a toggle at the front, which means that I can actually tighten it up if I need to. If you're planning on going in the water in the winter, this is highly recommended. As far as gloves go, I normally go for a three mil glove. They keep me nice and warm and they're not too thick, so it allows me to still have full dexterity. I'd also quite like to mention safety in the water when you're out there. It is advised that if you are swimming in an area that you don't know, that you take a tow float, which is one of these. And essentially what you can do is you can blow this up so it floats, hang on. You can actually put things in this as well because it is kind of like a dry bag. But this is on a strap. You strap it to yourself, you swim along. This goes behind you and it just means that any passing boats or anybody, any fisherman that might have lines will be able to see you from a distance. And also if you get into any trouble in the water, you can kind of use it to, you can kind of use it to hold on. It also has here as well, a little whistle. If you get into any trouble. If you're snorkeling or diving, obviously a knife is very important as well. These are pretty much designed for if you're diving down and you get into any trouble. You can cut yourself away from any fishing lines. It does have a serrated edge on one side and a sharp edge on the other as well. I'm not going to go into the snorkel set that I use because I have made a video about that already. Maybe I'll link that one at the end if you are interested in getting into snorkeling and I can just talk to you about the different types of mask. So the only thing that I would probably say for you, if this is going to be your first wetsuit or if you're looking at upgrading the wetsuit that you've already got, there are a lot of companies out there that do different wetsuits. They all fit completely differently, okay? So I would always recommend going to a shop, trying them on and making sure that they fit you. There's lots of companies out there like TWF that make like cheap wetsuits, you know, they're like 30 pounds. If you're gonna buy wetsuits for your children or anything like that, you might wanna start them off with something cheap just to see if they actually, if they're gonna use it. But just be aware that the cheaper wetsuits don't tend to fit as well. If you've got any areas of the wetsuit that don't fit your skin nice and snugly they will let in water and if they're constantly let in water you're going to constantly get cold thickness wise ask yourself the question when you're going to use it if it's just going to be a summer suit maybe just get a free two you can go for shorties you can go for long ones i always go for long wetsuits because i like to use them all year round but if it is just for your two week summer holiday then yeah you might want to consider a short wetsuit you will find that there's a brand that fits you and you will normally normally stick to that. All of the wetsuit gear that I've mentioned will be listed in the description below. If you have any questions about any makes or any sort of wetsuit that you might be interested in and you just want to speak to me about it, leave a comment below. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you like videos to do with Cornwall, to do with being outdoors, to do with being in the sea. And for those of you that watch every one of these videos, just maybe just have a look and just make sure that you are actually subscribed. And if you are looking at getting into snorkeling, and you want to know what snorkel stuff's probably going to be best for you, then check out this video here. See you next time.